Hey guys, what's up? Dan here with Elk Shape. Today's the day. It's the launch day. I'm excited. We've made several videos this week. Uh, hopefully you're uh, excited to go try or shoot this bow. I know that a lot of the flagship bows have already been dropped and maybe you've been patiently waiting. To, like, is that it? And I think it's cool to see Matthews come in last to show off what they've created for 2024, which is pretty much everything new. We're looking at a sub four pound bow which is awesome. That doesn't sacrifice stability, accuracy, and it has increased speeds. With the Switchweight X cams, you're looking at a more aggressive cam, but still have a smooth draw cycle and a solid back wall, which is important to me. And now we can finally get up to 80 pound mods and down to 55, which is a huge range. And then draw lengths with the 29 and a half, you can go all the way down to 24.5 inches. And with the 33 and a half, you can go all the way up to a draw length of 31 and a half inches. Quite the spread, lots of options. The thing I like about the Switchweight mods and the Switchweight X is that you can always have your bow maxed out for efficiency. So you're not loosening limb bolts like you are with other things out there. This is always set up for maximizing efficiency, energy, and performance. So the skeletonized riser, you're gonna notice it's cut out. That's where they saved a lot of weight. All new cams, limb cups, shorter limbs, still has the dampening, axle assembly on top. They have cut out a lot of unneeded weight, but kept the integrity of a bow that's not only bulletproof for elk hunting and whatever you guys do, but it has the speed. So let's go ahead and roll the footage on what you need to know about this bow. Your two options are 33 and a half, 29 and a half. I went with the 29 and a half just cause I'm elk hunter Shorter draw length 27, which puts me right in the sweet spot with a 29 and a half. Whereas with the 33 and a half, that puts me kind of towards the bottom end of that bow. So I always usually kind of go with whichever one's gonna suit my draw length. And that's this. And plus I don't mind hauling around a little more compact bow in the elk woods. So the riser finish is earth. That's what I chose. I love it. As far as speeds go, this is a 75 pound Matthews phase four at 80% let off and it shoots my 425 grain arrow at or around 285, 286. Now, this is at 80 pounds. Finally, you have the option to get 80 pound mods, which I did obviously, and I picked 80% let off, and I'm shooting that same arrow at 300 feet a second. Cams are more oval. There's gonna be more potential energy. You're gonna store more energy with that little bit more aggressive cam. You're gonna feel it in the draw cycle too a little bit. So eat your Wheaties if you go up to 80, but it is fast and it's quieter than the phase four. And that's my personal opinion, but I believe it to be quieter and I know it to be faster and I know it to be lighter. What did they change specs wise? Well, the brace height, is still six inches. This ATA on the phase four is 29, it's 29 and a half. So you got a half inch longer axle to axle. But speaking of axles, they've changed that axle assembly. So this one, the axle is running through the limbs. Whereas this one, the axle is on top of the limbs. It's easier to get to in the bow press. I think it's easier to change out top hats where you take the axle out, take the cam out and switch the shims. Much easier. Uh, I think it's overall better design for working on your bow, and I'm sure there's a bunch of technical reasons the engineers did that, but that's one of the biggest things I noticed. This limb pocket angle, different, and then the limb bolt is a lot smaller. I think it's saving a lot of weight right there as well. Plus, with Matthew's switch weight technology, you're not really ever gonna mess with the limb bolt, at least I'm not. I'm just gonna go up or down in a mod, depending on what draw weight, draw length, and let up. That's the cool thing about Matthew's bows and the switch weight technology is if you wanted to use one of my bows, all we gotta do is get the mods. We don't have to order new cams or anything. So you could be a 30 inch right-handed bow shooter and you wanna shoot 60 pounds at 85% let off. There's a mod for that. We'll swap it out and we don't have to change strings or nothing. Pretty cool. Speaking of strings, these are match strings. I've ran them for two months, thousands and thousands of arrows. I just put this bow in the draw board, checked time, we're still in time. I've had zero separation in the serving. I like the specs of the serving. My knock fit is awesome. There's no slop, it's not stuck on there like sludge or concrete, and there's no separation anywhere. These strings are holding up, which is huge for me because I'm 
basically don't have to buy custom strings anymore. I can just run the match. So Matthews went with BCY 452X string material and they changed every part of their process in-house for making strings. So now their factory strings are legit. Take my word for it because I've been a critic in the past. Everything else you probably could figure out. Still got bridge lock accessories up the wazoo so you can get your bridge lock stabilizers, the V-bar and the back. You can run the bridge lock with a lot of the sites, which is great. I chose to use the QAD MX2. It's the integration, so it's seamless. It's small footprint. Honestly, the QAD I've been a harsh critic of. It is literally the best rest on the market when it comes to micro adjusting, like literally one baby click if you wanna get that perfect tear in paper or really wanna get that true fixed broadhead flight. You're gonna want that. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. The new EXO, so these are the engaged leg limbs that are different. I think they've improved the design overall to where it's more sleek and there's zero vibration. And then just head to head, this is a quieter bow in my estimation. It just seems to be like you don't even notice it going off. And you can still run the two piece or the one piece low pro with Matthews, bring everything really close to the riser. Go to a dealer. Support your local dealer. They probably have this bow in stock today. Go shoot it for yourself. And once you do, come back here. Let me know what you thought. All right, guys, now that you've watched all that, I wanted to quickly just do a little test here. I ran the 80 pound mods at 80% let off all September. And I ordered 75 pound mods at 85% let off and 80% let off. And I wanted to test the speeds and see the difference. So with this arrow, we were getting 300 feet a second with the 80 pound mods at 80% let off. I just took, no bow press needed, I just took that out and threw in 75 pound at 85% let off. Let's shoot it through the chrono. This is the HS3 from Last Chance. 76.3 at a holding weight of 12.8. We'll test it one more time, reset it. So again, 76, 12.8. So got the same numbers twice. So. We will shoot this through the chrono, get the speed of this 425. Again, we're at 300 feet a second with the 80 pound mods. I wanna see what the speed is here. And then I will take those mods out and throw the 75, 80% let off. And we'll test the speeds on that. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm probably gonna go with uh, the 75 pounds. I just don't know which let off, but uh, especially for whitetail, I'm gonna use this for whitetail and I don't feel like I need to pull 80 pounds for whitetail, but I definitely would go back to 80 for elk because I've got a short draw length. All right, let's go test this on the chrono. We'll be right back. 291. All right, let's put the uh, 75 pound mods with 80% let off and see if we have any speed differential. Good Lord. All right, 75 pounds, 80% let off, 291. We got the same speed, 291. Okay, with the 75 pounds at 80% let off, let's test this with the HS3, reset. Says it's at 76 pounds and the holding weight is 15.6. Man, that's a good wall. We got 76 at 15.8 holding pounds. So you got options there. Obviously we didn't lose any speed. It's still pulling the same weight. So 291 feet per second with a 425 grain arrow, which is my hunting arrow. And then with the 80 pound mods, we were getting 300 feet a second. That's awesome. I like the option of running the 80 pound mods for elk season. I just like that powerful punch at 27 inch draw length. For all my other species, including whitetail, I'm probably gonna drop down to 75 pounds and I'm gonna go to 80% uh, let off. Just I like a little bit more holding weight, but the cool thing is you guys have the options. So awesome, excited, please. Go try the bow out. Go shoot it for yourself. Don't believe me. Don't believe the hype. Go see if the hype is real. I've ran it. It's got my seal of approval, if that means anything to you. I really believe in this bow, and I think you'll like it. If you're looking for change, check it out. Support your local dealer. Go shoot it for yourself. See what you think, guys. Tomorrow, we're going to drop this entire bow build video. Be on the lookout for that. And then the following day, we're going to drop our hunt film. Appreciate you guys. Separations in the preparation. We'll catch you on the next one.